Hey people, it's me again. So, anyways, one of the other things that I wanted to talk about here, as far as that goes, is whether or not the Democrats will restructure themselves after this year's midterms, because everybody knows that the Democrats are going to have a huge beating this year you know, when you look at the whole uh, voter turnout for the Republicans and the fact that they're about 7 to 10 percent of Democrats voters are voting for Republicans, you know, which says a lot, you know, but I'm probably one of those people there, you know, that would probably vote for a Republican if it means getting rid of the neoliberal stooges, you know, that are on their last leg anyways, or the woke dunderheads as far as that goes, you know, but I think Considering all of that, it's going to have a, a bit of a stretch for the Democrats as far as restructuring themselves because then they have to appeal to a broader voter base. You know, it's not just, you know, it's not just going around so further to the left just to get the young vote. No, you have to do something better than that. You know, especially retaining people like me who have voted for the Democrats for the longest time and and are just fed up with their um, incompetence and corruption and all of this. Yeah. You know what I mean? So... Considering all of that, you know, when it comes to the rest of the whole thing here, you know, but I think it'll probably take a while for the Democrats to restructure themselves at this point, you know, but considering all of that, you know, I mean, let's just say that as far as for 2024, that, you know, that Trump or DeSantis wins, you know, by a considerable margin and the Democrats are utterly even more defeated, you know, then they have to restructure themselves as far as that goes. And, and you know, I think the first thing they're going to do is get rid of all these uh, dying neoliberals, the Pelosi's and the Schumer's and of that because they are just completely irrelevant at that point. You know what I mean? But I certainly don't think they're going to you know, rally behind the squad or AOC of that sort because that's like the other reasoning, you know, this sort of thing is happening. You know? So, considering all of that, they'll have to look for someone who could be somewhere in the middle who is at least young enough to rally behind at that point, but it really depends on who is willing to put up with the different factions, you know, vying for the control of the party as well as the soul of it and whatnot, you know? But it just puts a lot of other things into question there because considering all of that 
you know, AOC would be one to throw her hat in the wing ring to vie for control of the party and and all of that, you know. But considering all of that, I think it's that she may have earned her stripes in the party for that matter. But you know it all kind of depends on a lot of other things but in a way a lot of those other people that are like AOC will eventually grow out of that whole um, socialist type um, ideology because they'll realize it's not really as cracked up as as they think it was and all that you know and although there will still be some people that will still wholeheartedly believe in socialism and all that but I don't think it's really going to make any, that much of a difference you know because of the fact that it, you know socialism is good in theory, but in practice, it, it, there's just so much human element and variables that it, it could just never work, you know. And a lot of times when it fails, there's just certain people that will be a, the usual apologist of saying that it, it never, it was implied incorrectly and whatnot, and there's just a lot more to it than that, you know what I mean? But the way I see it there is that there's going to be a restructuring of the Democratic Party. It depends on, you know, which faction is going to have more sway and depending on who's going to win out in the long run when it comes to the restructuring of the Democratic Party. Because considering all that, they have to think about the long-term implications of that sort. Because of the fact that, you know, Gen Z is still young and all of that. But they're not going to be young forever. You know, in the next 10 years, is going to be the, the next set of the first half of the... Of the Gen Z are going to be in their 30s, and then the second half of the half of Gen Z is going to be in their 20s of that sort. Well, the first half of the millennials are going to be in their 50s, and the other half are going to be in their 40s. And then, of course, the the Gen Xers being their 70s, 60s, and 70s of that sort. And so, there's bound to be a lot more changes of that sort there because within the next 10 years is going to be, you know, the baby boomers are going to check out. And so that is just another thing altogether, is how else things are going to change at that point, you know. But who knows how things would be at this point there, you know, once... You know, the baby boomers, you know, you know, go to pasture and all of that, and you know what I mean. But considering all that, I don't really expect even like the Gen Xers to go to pasture and all of that, you know. But that is one of the bigger problems. So, I wouldn't necessarily go right into it, but anyways, talk to you guys later.